<laughs> Patty's petite tanks. How in the hell? I just hit the live button. How'd you know I was going up? <laughs> welcome, sister. Welcome. What is happening? What is happening? Hold on. That's funny. How are you doing? How is uh, how's it over your way? Uh, how's the weather? Oh, and welcome to Detroit Shrimp and Aquatics, soon to be Motor City Aquatics. Uh, we're going to switch the name up a little. I think it's more catchy. Uh, so we're going to roll with that, Motor City Aquatics. And because uh, it's, uh, I think it's, it's all Leah's fault, you know, because we had the Detroit Shrimp and then she put the cars on the shirts. Hence truck. Uh, she put the cars on the shirts, and uh, you know, then the Motor City word started coming up. So um, we thought, you know, hey, uh, it, it sounds like a good uh, a good change. It's not like we're going to uh, you know Motor City Guppies or anything. You know, we're not changing that up. We're not putting Guppies in there or nothing. We're uh, we're just uh, you know because. We're switching up with the time, so we're going to carry all the shrimp uh, as normal, but not all the shrimp. You know, it's like uh, the Blue Dreams. I'll, I'll put order together right now, and they ordered 10 Blue Dreams, uh, but I don't know. There's maybe 18 of them, so I think I'm just going to send them all and give them all to them because I think they're all female. Uh I, I don't know. It's what it looks like. And so I already emptied the tank. So I took the 15 gallon, put it right there. So now I have 15 gallon, 15 gallon, uh, then three tens, and then the 15 gallon here for the Shelleys. And also, uh, um, oh, I have 24 uh, half beaks coming in. So uh, that's, uh, I need a place to put those. Whammo right there. Uh, I just need to take substrate out. I mix, I poured black sand over white pool sand because, you know, so I could see the shrimp better. And since it got mixed up because I washed it, uh, I don't know. It's not horrible. I don't know. It's just, I like everything to be uniform. It's uh, so if I, if I vacuum it all out, because I have a really big hose that I use the, to siphon the tanks, the bottom, to, to do the substrate changes. Um, so I can vacuum all the substrate out before the tank goes empty. Uh, and then I'm just going to pour solid black in there because they're all platinum half beaks. Uh, they're gorgeous half beaks. So uh, um, they'll be coming in the mail here shortly. This week they're coming. So I'll take care of that. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to change the name to Motor City Aquatics. Uh, just, uh, like I said, sounds better. Uh, I, and I think it'll hit a, you know, a larger window of people um, because there's so many car people in Detroit. You know, it's what we're known for, the car shows, the auto show, you know, all these big, huge uh, things that go on. And just calling it Detroit, uh, I think I'm losing out on a on a larger uh, on a larger uh, you know quantity of people. So we thought we'd change it up a little. Well, I thought, and then I got support from the fam family <laughs> from this family and from you guys. So, Leah Jets, how's it going? How's it going? I was scrolling and bam, there it was. Nice. I'm glad when it comes too quick. My fish tanks, aquatics. What is happening? Good morning. Thank you for showing up. Thank you, Leo, for showing up. Uh, I'm excited about the name. I wanted to suggest it with the first shirt. See, that's what I'm saying. Leah brought it up because she actually brought it up because I was like, why'd you put a truck on the shirt? You know, I like it, but what was your you know, thought process. She's like, well, you guys are known for the Motor City. And I was like, ooh. 
and a little light bulb went off. It was a dim bulb, but it did go off and it got brighter over, over time. You know, I just had to put a larger bulb in there, but yeah. So dancely. Yes. What up? What up? Uh, missed call last night. Uh, will you hit you up after work today? Yeah. We was calling Dan. Just say hello. I haven't talked to Dan in a while. Uh, we have Dan's beautiful red steel right there in that tank. Skid, 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 skid. Give him a little tickle lifter there. But uh, that tank is doing good. I'm very impressed. I was kind of scared. Dan sent me some shrimp. Um, the one set didn't do so good. I only have one left. I'm trying to make more with it. Uh, and then uh, the other set, the red steels, I only lost a couple, but they were really slow. So I decided just leave them alone. Leave them alone, leave them alone, leave them alone. And then I saw babies one time, and I was like, oh, great, they're going to start breeding. Then I didn't see babies, and I was like, you know, what's going on? Are they, you know, you know, what's going on here? You know, so now I took the Sabwasertan out to clean it like I did these. And, uh, yeah, there's a buttload of babies in there. They're, I mean, they're shrimplets. They're not babies, but uh, probably a couple weeks I'll be able to send them to uh, Mr. Slee and he can uh, start packing them in his tanks. Oh, this tastes like trash. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ooh. But, hey, I don't have any other energy drinks here, so I got to drink it. <laughs> I didn't want to walk next door. So, Motor City is good. We know that's Detroit. See, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I didn't want, you know, to say by or anything, you know, or, you know, because if you bought a shirt or the stickers, but, you know, still kind of means the same. Detroit, Motor City. I mean, that's what most people say. Detroit, Motor City. Whatever, you know. Uh, so we're just uh, flip-flopping it a little bit. So William Newell, welcome for showing up. Thank you for showing up to the channel. Uh, very nice to have you. Uh, I missed driving by that huge tire when I was going to visit my family in Canada. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Down on 94. Yeah, we used to have this. It was uh, this huge tire. Tireman, I think it was. I mean, it was probably, I don't know, 100 and some foot tall, massive tire when he was driving down the expressway. So you always got to see it. It was kind of like, a, you know, a landmark of some sort that <laughs> that you knew you were getting into a bad neighborhood. No, it was, uh, you know, it's just something that, you know, showed for uh, downtown. It was kind of cool. William Newell. Welcome, 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 William. Yeah, it'd be great to catch up. Our shrimp, yeah. See, see, he Dan always says our shrimp. Dan paid for him. I mean, I'll agree, our shrimp. But you know, it was just uh, it was nice to be asked to do it. So Leah said, oh, "I finally see or blue babies makes me happy because I thought I was having a survival problem." Yeah, hey, it's um. You know, same thing. I was just looking at my Aura Blues the other day, and one of them has a back line. It's, uh, it's not like a heavy back line like a Neo, but it's, uh, it's uh, like a sugary, you know, it's pretty cool looking. Atkins Nature Aquariums, how are you? Thank you for uh, showing up and coming to visit. Good to see you. Good to see you. Should be fairly easy. Switch over for website two. Can go over how to transition this afternoon when we chat. Okay, great. Remember to like the stream. Thank you much. Thank you much. Yep, backline very common in Serata. That's where it came from in the hybrids. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, you know where I got mine from. Uh, it's just, uh, I was looking in there the other day after Leah, you know, so excitedly started to brag on the stream that she had triplets. I mean, <laughs> who does that on somebody's stream? Tells people that you have babies. But, uh, so I was a little jealous, so I went over there and looked. But when I look in the tank next to it, the 
the black dragons or black calcios, they had another set of babies. So very excited, very excited. Um, so I got some things to uh, let everyone know. Uh, it's it's not bad. It's it's good, but um, uh, let's go first with fish tanks. Um, I don't know if anyone knows Skipper's Aquariums. What's up, my Skippy? Good, good guy right there. Good guy. Thank you for coming in. Uh, I hate stupid people. Tank Tribe. What's up? I love that name. SC Catahoulas. Yeah, I remember the huge Uniroyal tile. Tire. Yeah, Uniroyal. Okay, it wasn't Tireman. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for letting me know. Shrimp come in many colors. That's right, Shrimp Aquatics. I never knew. Oh, yes, they do. In case you don't. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> um, um, um. If no one knows, uh, there is a glass shortage. Uh, so um, if I don't know where where if it's where you live or if anyone else is noticing it, I don't know of or have heard of any issues with like the dollar a gallon sale. You know, with like Aquion having an issue because who knows they. I don't know where they get their tanks made, but anywho, at my buddy's store, it's hard. It's way harder than it was before the virus started. When the virus started, it was hard for him to get stuff. But now he said the the tank, the glass pr glass prices have gone up uh, 13% more than what they were. So, <clears throat> you know, when um, that rolls over to the consumer... You know, because first the guy who makes the tanks, like my 125 is made by a, uh, the guy makes the, makes tanks. Uh, it's not from Aquion. It's not from, you know, any tank maker, uh, large, big tank maker. This is a guy who makes them out of his home and brings them to the pet stores and he sells them. Uh, it's not aquatic America. I'll leave it. Uh, hold on. I'll tell you the name of it. <laughs> Oh, it is. Yeah, it's Aquatic America. Um, so he makes them right in his home, uh, you know, and just bring it to the store. So there's some stores around me, like some people say, well, I can't find uh, 33 long or something like that. Well, the store down the street from me has a ton of them. Uh, my buddy's store just started getting them. But my buddy's store usually has massive tanks. <clears throat> that tank there, when I traded him my 124 foot, my four foot, my two foot, my two foot, whatever, um, he's like, well, you don't want one of these. I was like, why not? And he's like, well, these are more expensive because, you know, uh, old boy makes them. I was like, well, they ain't got nothing to do with me. I mean, I need a tank. You got a tank. He had three of them. Guy made three of them. So uh, glass is going up. So, like, I have all these tanks that I took down to make room and everything. And uh, and um, I called him. I said, hey, you need some tanks? I know you got a dollar a gallon sale. It's no big deal. I said, but I have these tanks piled up in my basement here. I said, I'll keep half. He's like, you might want to keep those tanks because it might be hard to get some tanks soon with the prices going up. So, I don't know anything about that, but I do know that it's hard to get tanks. So, uh, if you guys need a big tank or looking for a big tank, uh, like let's say for the holidays or something, you might want to start shopping now because uh, the word around town, it's been that way for a while, but it's getting worse now because the prices are going up. And uh, then they're saying now it's like uh, 30000 30, a container, a shipping container now uh, coming from overseas when it used to be like 3500 bucks uh they're at thirty thousand dollars a sh shipping container so everything they're sending over you know they have to jack the price up for that stuff and and no one's even uh you know getting in on that and trying to uh control it so uh you know it's it's kind of another reason to support your mom and pop store and hey let all that stuff coming from overseas let them have that crap you know, but uh, yeah, it's like 30, 30 grand. So, uh, Danny Wessey, what is going on, my rock star? 
Pumpkin King. What's happening? Thank you for stopping in. Great. We now have a glass shortage here in the States. Yeah, so I don't know if it's uh if it'll be an issue for the small tanks, but I know it is for the big tanks. Uh, because like when I called them the other day, you know, I call them like every other day. And uh, I was like, what's what's happening? He said, not I saw I was business. He said, it wasn't bad. I said, uh, I said, you sell a bunch of stuff. Uh, and he's like, uh, if I could get it. I said, what do you mean? He's like, tanks again? I can't get tanks. Um, so uh, there was a, a minute there that he was getting them from a whole nother uh, vendor. And uh, they were actually, they're actually nice tanks. I can't think of the name of them right now. Uh, blue? Blue something? Are they, is it blue something? I don't know. But uh, I'll think of it. I'll let you know. Uh, really good tanks, real thick glass, thick, thick glass. But I think they ran out of glass, so he was able. And then some other brands got some more, so he went back to those. But so, yeah, glass issues, uh, lots of glass issues uh, these days. Uh, part two is um, as we go with the neocaridinia, here's the other thing, shrimp. Uh, everything shrimp is, um, you know, slowing up too, because, you know, um, if you import anything, it's becoming very expensive. Okay. Uh, it, you know, like I get nets, food, all this stuff, you know, it's, uh, all the, the GH plus, you know, I got tons of stuff, you know, the dual sponge filters that I have, um, Thank gosh that I've had this stuff for a while, you know, that I have it available and stuff. But if I was to get it now, the the markup on it would be just ridiculous. I mean, really ridiculous. So what we've decided to do is as we go, as we sell the, the neocaridinia, as they sell out, that's it for now until things change. Because, um, you know, you can... I mean, breeding them is is great, but if I run low, like the yellows are doing great. Uh, oranges, I don't see any babies yet. Uh, green jades are not, you know. I got a, I got plenty in here, but the thing is, is if I run out, you know, that's it. Like these here, I'm not going to keep a tank running uh, for eight shrimp. Um, like I said, I believe they're all female. So I don't have nothing else to put in there. I really don't want to use any other genes. Um, so since I'm consolidating, what's going to happen since things are so slow right now? Because uh, even Blue Crown has said that uh, that he's even getting questioned by, uh, you know, his people. You know, hey, what's going on? You know, how come all the products aren't moving? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, hold on. I didn't see anything. Hold on, Dan. Um, you know, and he's like, no, everything's just so slow and dead. And what it is, is uh, what we're thinking is, is um, uh, due to, you know, with the inflation, prices going up, gas going up, you know, people are wondering, you know, hey, what's, you know, where's our next dollar going to be needed? So it's kind of slowing things up. Even my buddy at his pet store, I mean, he was slinging fish. If you brought a fish in there that was big, he'd sell it in two seconds. Now his tanks are still flying, but you know, um, people aren't coming in like every day and emptying out his tanks like they were. So things kind of slowed up uh, for the past, like probably month. Hold on. Danny asked something. Brian, do you have any neocaridina that are bright red with white feet? Nope. The only uh, shrimp I have that are red with white feet are my Soloasi. I've never seen a Neocaridina. Uh, no, never seen one uh, bright red with white feet. Dobo! Sorry, I missed your question. Yeah, if you have tanks, he, he said uh, don't, don't get rid of them. I mean... I remember there for a minute that he couldn't even get 10 gallons. I was like, dude, you want me to go to a dollar gallon sale? Go buy you, you know, 10, 15 tanks and bring them here. He said, well, let's just see how bad it gets. And then he was able to get some tanks. But I mean, if your local fish store can't get it, I mean, 
you know, it's going to suck. But here's the thing is if you got to go to Petco, Pet Smart or something to get a tank and then go to your local fish store to buy the fish and stuff, um, you know, you, we got to we got to stay focused and supportive of the, the little people right now, um, the way things are going, because you thought the virus is bad. Well, if they start jacking prices and, you know, <clears throat> doing all sorts of weird stuff, it's going to hurt businesses, too. Like uh, the governor here just um, uh, re uh, or they just passed that um, bridge work commercial work outside work uh for some jobs are going to jump back up to the initial pay but here's another thing is they they just kicked in prevailing wage so which means uh here in michigan which means okay let's say i work for a company and uh we're um building i don't know a, you know let's say a, a eight-story building uh apartment complex or something um well we're short you know we're we need more uh hands on deck well let's say all the companies are busy so so the union reaches out to companies let's say in ohio or virginia or something says hey we need carpenters they say okay well in like virginia let's say they only pay like 12 bucks an hour 13 dollars an hour for their package well, my package after everything's taken out is 35 and some change. Well, now what they're doing is if they're trying to make it more competitive because if a, before the way it was is contractors could come from other states and roll up with their guys and they're only getting 12, $15 an hour and they, they're doing the same work as us for peanuts. Well, now what they're doing is when you come to Michigan, and you want to work in Michigan and you, you want our work, you have to pay your employees what we get. Now, look, I get, you know, it's like 70 some dollars with the package, health care, uh, benefits, pension, annuity, <clears throat> um, you name all this stuff, right? Uh, well, now what they have to do is since they're not union members, is they have to pay them that whole package. So, I mean, it's just enormous uh, amounts now. So uh, they're making things better here. Let's just hope that, uh, you know, the work doesn't go away, you know, if they raise, uh, you know, prices too high, you know, so. Oh, you were talking Caradina. Yeah, I've, well, no worries. There's a hard water caradina from Sulawesi with red and white legs. These are caradina dinerle, aka cardinal shrimp. I'm trying to create Spider Man Neo Caradina. Oh, oh, so you're going to put blue and, blue and reds together. You want blue and reds. Oh, oh, you think you're going to do blue, red, and get some white legs on them? Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I'd, that'd take a while. Uh, well, no, I mean, if you throw, well, snowballs, snowballs aren't really white, white. They're like a, they're like a milky, clear, clear, has like a watered down milky look to it. So I don't think that would work putting it in there. And uh, yeah, they're the whitest ones. I don't have anything else white. Um Red, black. No, that's it. <clears throat> Clear white can still work. Yeah, I got uh, snowballs. Snowballs are my fave. One of them. I mean, uh, it's because the the berries that they make are they're like pure pearls. I've never seen anything so perfect. They glow really bright. Uh, they're just it's just beautiful. I don't see it in any other shrimp. So. Yeah, the uh, the Spider Man they do what do they call them Spider Man Superman stuff. It's uh, kind of like what uh, LRB has made uh, by accident. He said he would make them uh, more, you know, pay more attention if he had the time. Uh, but yeah, people try it. Um, 
I've had uh, like red rillies with the clear inside. Uh, all the clear was blue, and that looks pretty sweet. Um, but uh, our white opaque flesh, no white patterning. No, nah, snowballs are awesome. One of the few that need very little color. Yeah, I just love them to death. But so anyways, what I was saying is with the neocaridinia, as they sell out, they're going to stay out. Uh, and then when things pick up, then I'll just, you know, start all over. I'll get uh, brand new batches and start all over. It's just, um, uh, you know, I want to take whatever time I'm spending, you know, on neos and like put it on fish so i have two tanks of shelly's and then i'm gonna have the tank of uh of uh oh son of a bitch how do i forget that um god damn how do i forget the name of them fish holy crap see that's what i'm saying my accents got me all jacked up uh those needle nose fish. So anyways, I'm going to have those over there. So if I can take some time, you know, that I use on Neos and as the tanks run out, just shut those tanks down and use that time towards um, keeping the rest of the Caradina tanks because none of the Caradina are going anywhere. None. Except maybe this tank because there's only a couple left, the orange eyes. But no Caradina are going anywhere. Um I just work way too hard. I mean, they're just, no, they're not going anywhere. But uh, so the time I use on these will be spent on the shrimp. So uh, it's, uh, I mean, it'll be spent on the fish. So, you know, I'm, I'm just changing some stuff up. Uh, and that's why, uh, you know, we're changing over a little. Like I said, you know, I got to, uh, you know, my numbers are going up. Uh, things are going really good, um, and I really enjoy doing both the fish and the shrimp. Um, I just felt before when I was when I was doing just the shrimp that uh, you know something's missing. Um, so that's why uh, I've decided to uh, incorporate fish back into it. But here in the shrimp room, um, it's just going to be uh, small fish. Um, so we're not going to put, uh, anything big, all the big stuff will be out there. And that's what we have out there is staying out there. I'm not getting big fish in there, but, uh, that's it. They're neat and not that hard to get. No, they're not hard to get. I get the red rillies with the blue flesh easily. Big tank, Hank. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for stopping in and hanging out. I'm trying to do something a little different. Yeah, hey, whatever. It's a journey. Yeah, whatever you're uh, doing. I mean, I've seen, like, my tank over there, uh, the gulper tank that I keep all my Caradina extras in, <clears throat> um, there's all sorts of cool-looking shrimp in there. You know, like I said, the, the catfish don't eat them. Uh, they're just way too big. So uh, um, it, it looks super cool. So, manes, tails, fur, and fins. Welcome, Jess. <laughs> I heard some bad news about Jess yesterday. Yeah, I'm sure she's tired of hearing all the channels. It's uh, she went and got something done that I could do. So. Okay. Well, thank you. I just uh, got a message saying if anybody wants Blue Dream, send them out. They will ship them for me. That is so very nice. Uh, but Jess got something done that I oh, hate, 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 hate. Uh, Jess got dental work done. Uh, I've never had to. Well, actually, I can't say that. I've had a, I had a, a, a root canal done. Uh, once because they went to go drill the top bit because there was a um, uh, I had a cavity. So when he started to drill, I 
almost knocked the guy out, you know, I wanted to hit him because he hit like the nerve. So he's like, oh boy, you got a hot tooth. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, the nerve's right there. Uh, you got to come back. We'll go. I can't put more, you know, stuff in there to numb it because you got too much. Anyways, I went back, never felt it. The guy did a root canal, never felt it. Uh, the only thing that happened is my jaw got real sore because, you know, you got to keep my mouth way open. Uh, they're drilling so much. And then I started smelling rubber melting and all this stuff. And I was like, what? Are you building a car in my mouth or something? But uh, it turned out good. That was uh, in, um, when I get, I don't know, maybe 2000, 2001. Now it's 2021, and, you know, uh, I go to the dentist, and uh, they're like, you know what? Um, you should probably get that capped or something. They want to drill, grind all the way around it, and then put a cap on it. I was like, why would you do that? They said, well, the tooth is dead. I said, what do you mean the tooth's dead? And they said, well, the, the root's ripped out. So it's, I said, but there's nothing wrong with the tooth. They said, yeah, but if it breaks... I said, yeah, but you want to grind around it and just leave a little stump sticking up. You, how how strong will that be? So, and then I have fillings, you know, the silver fillings. Well, they started drilling those out, and they're putting the new white stuff in. Uh, but, and that, it, it makes my stomach queasy, makes me cringe. Um, I don't like anything touching my teeth. You know, I have all my teeth, my wisdom teeth, everything. Uh, and I cannot stand it. She got work done and she had to take a couple days off. Oh, all right, Dan, I'll talk to you later today. Thanks for showing up, buddy. Three G Aquatics, um, Skull Aquatics, welcome. Love that. I just, I just think like some on fire skull when I say it. Uh, <laughs> Danny says, Morning show, and the same with these replacements. It's like the football movie the replacements but uh yeah so just i guess she got some teeth work done she commented that she's still swollen a little bit uh i've seen some people go through some nasty the nasty stuff uh you know i i watch people get all their teeth pulled out have the whole bottom pulled out and then the whole top pulled out and then they put dentures in it. it took like two months to where you couldn't tell anymore uh the way they talked and stuff but I've seen some people go through some painful, some stuff, man. And it's, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's just, uh, I, t I don't know if I'd rather break a toe or something or break a finger before I had dental work done. Boy, is it, oof. Dental work just makes me want to throw up. Serious. It makes me very queasy. Very, very, very queasy. I, I do not like it one bit. <laughs> New local Austin, Jenny Lynn. Welcome, welcome. Alan two forty eight. I'm a oh really? I'm a dental hygienist. I would have fun with you. <laughs> Even with all my teeth. Hey, they used to ask me ever since I was a kid. They said, "So when do you have dent? Uh, when do you have uh, braces?" I'm like, braces. They're like, yeah, you had braces, right? I'm like, no, I've never had braces. And they said, wow, how are your teeth so straight? I'm like, I don't, uh, I don't know, God, I don't know. Uh, so the only thing is, is my bottom ones right here in the front, they're kind of staggered a little bit, you know, because I have so many teeth, you know. So, I mean, other than that, you can't tell when I smile and stuff, but uh yeah, it's cool. I told him, I said, you're not pulling my wisdom teeth. They said, sir, uh, we usually never drill uh, wisdom teeth because they're soft, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, look, one day I'm going to need to get a tooth removed, maybe. Um, and I'll need it removed. Well, can we just wait till then and maybe start pulling them then instead of start pulling them now when I'm, you know, 25, uh, Pulling them for no reason, fill it. So they filled it, and uh, they're great. I never have, you know, jaw pain, teeth pain, nothing. You know, so don't don't let somebody tell you to yank out your wisdom teeth if you're uh, 
if you don't have any pain, your teeth are straight. Keep them suckers, man. Keep them till one day you might need to get rid of, of a tooth and you can, sir, your wisdom tooth needs to come out. Oh, that one way back there that I don't need. Yeah, go ahead and get rid of it. So, yeah. Alan Tooth 48 is getting his, uh, getting your order today. I got uh, all the seats pulled. Um, so, uh, I got two orders going out today. Uh, I'm very lazy. I'm very lazy. It's, uh, I don't know what it is. It's, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, um, sugarcoat it ever since. <laughs> uh, my wife had a discussion with me the other day and, uh, cracked the whip on me. No lie. Uh, said, look, you just ain't the same. You need to get back to work. Uh, you know, ever since I got hurt, injured and stuff, it just, uh, it's put me in, uh, you know, uh, put me in, I don't know. I used to never be late. I needed to do 90 things in a day. You know, I was busy, 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 busy till shower time. Then I'd literally fall right asleep. I'd come home, take a shower, eat dinner, hang out with the kids and whew, fall out. I mean, every day. Um, so She's like, look, you need to come back here, you know, stay up till three in the morning and all this. She's like, you just ain't the same person you used to be. And I was like, all right. So I made a few calls to the union people, my stewards and stuff. Said, all right, look, big guy is ready to come back. I signed my paperwork saying I'm cleared for work, which I did. So they said I'm good to go. Uh, you know, I just got to get a bunch of work done on my neck. Uh, they just changed my pills. I went to the doctor the other day and I was complaining. I don't know if you guys noticed. Look, dry shirt. Dry shirt. How was that? Uh, I went to the doctor the other day and I told him, I said, look, doc, I got an issue. I said, it's kind of embarrassing. He said, what's that? I said, I sweat so much. It's like I have a fire in my pants and it won't go away. I said, I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. And he said, you know, it's probably one of the medications that you're on. Let me swap it over. It's supposed to help. Uh, and he gave me that. I've been on it for two days today. It'd be three. And I told him, I said, I drink coffee and I just pour sweat. Pour sweat. It's like from here up. Woo, it's like I'm smoking. He's like, yep. All right. And then I told my wife, yes. I said, God, dog. She said, what? I said, my nipples are getting hard. I said, it's cold in here. I said, I'm usually hot, sweaty, and got a towel around. My shirt's soaking wet. I said, but he took me off the pills. I told him, I said, Doc, I've been taking these pills since 2008. He said, yeah, I think it's time to change. So I changed them. Bam, here I am. So. Uh, okay. Jess says, I had seven upper teeth pulled and put in top denture. Ooh. I, now, Jess, look, just for... You know, just like, you know, my father, when I was a kid, uh, had, um, had, uh, like, uh, partials, I think they're called. So yours is probably called the same. Oh, there's a plant caught in a sponge filter. <laughs> it's a boost. I was like, what is that sticking up out of the water? It's a boost. And it's flowering. Um, but my father had partials. Never even knew. He only wore them like when we went out and stuff because I never knew. When he'd smile real big, you could see a tooth on the side or something missing. But, um, you know, they just went in and clicked in. Click. They didn't have like all mouthpieces make it hard for him to talk. Uh, he just didn't like, they were the old school ones with the wires. So you'd pop it in and they kind of slide, you know, the tooth would slide up in there. You know, they weren't really made to, like, eat steak and stuff. They were just made to, you know, sparkle yourself up and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I can only imagine seven teeth. Oof. Um, yeah, get that parcel, pop it in there. I bet you no one even know. Uh, my brother has, I'm adopted, so I have an adopted brother. That's how I'm from, uh, my, my genes are from Lithuania. Uh, my brother's, like, uh, I don't know, Polish and something. Uh, but he's like six foot, 126 pounds. I'm six eight. I just weighed in a couple days ago, 299.7. Doc says, boy, you lost a pound. 
Brian, you know you're 300 pounds. I said, Doc, you know I quit smoking three years ago. Come on, help a brother out. Give me something. But uh, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> uh, so my dad, uh, yeah, he had that, but yeah, he popped that sucker in. But oh, but I was saying my brother, he's got it really bad. He's got something with the bones. Nothing bad. He doesn't have like gingivitis or something, but it's just really weak and his he has to keep getting teeth pulled out. It's uh really sad. So I think uh I don't know, I guess you can have a pretty smile without teeth. Or with fake teeth, I should say. Uh yeah. It's uh just sad, you know. It's um I think we all need our teeth. I'd rather lose everything but my teeth, uh, I think. Uh, or wait, maybe I could lose my teeth if I had my hair. Even though I cut it off so much all the time, but it's so nice and cool. But I hope you get uh, start feeling better, uh, Jess. I'm sure you will anyways. You seem uh, pretty strong. You're a, don't want to say Southern girl, but you're from down that way so i'm sure they don't make them very weak down there so i think you should be good good genetics yes uh did it just jump on me yeah i was 35 before my wisdom teeth started hurting me too bad to keep them and even then they only pulled three or four yeah it's, uh, i don't know mine just don't hurt they said they came in super straight that's like that's like my best attribute. I have straight teeth. Hey, just hope your day gets better super fast. Yes, yes, yes. All right, where are we at? Uh, congrats on seven hundred, Brian. Oh, am I at seven hundred? Uh, I actually was over seven hundred. I was seven oh seven yesterday. I was like, what? That's some like some James Bond uh, stuff if if we switch the numbers around. And then today I turned it on, it was $6.99 again. But that's what I'm saying. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're right at 700 Thank you, thank you. Uh, I was like, oh, YouTube's just doing their stuff. They take a couple away, and then they bring back. Papa Shrimp messaged me the other day and said, man, I had whatever number, and then I woke up saying, I think they took like 12 or 13 away. And then I think it was later that day, bam, he was like up 11. So, uh, oh, and they turned on my uh, uh, community tab thing so now I could start putting stuff up there. I guess they, they're they saying, hey, we got to throw this guy a bone, you know. We got to keep him, keep him interested. So thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, I'm actually going to do, uh, I don't know if I'll do it tonight or tomorrow, but I'm going to do a big 700 giveaway and then the big ones at a thousand. So, uh, you know, probably do, I don't know, be a lot of stuff at a thousand, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, uh, hitting a thousand is cool. Cause it, you know, it shows that all the work has uh, been worth it. Um, even, I mean, even without being at a thousand, it's still a blast because uh, it's fun. I have a lot of, uh, and this, it's therapeutic for me, you know. Uh, it really makes my day go good. Uh, makes makes uh, makes me happy. Uh, gives me somebody to talk to, vent to, you know, all sorts of that. So, um, yeah. All right. Uh, Leah Jet. Ooh, she actually, I forgot to, uh, I figured she would have busted up a long time ago. She's usually like in and out two people or two minute person. So thank you. Thank you, Leah, for stopping in three hour drive to see a specialist. What? Uh, I'd be putting that off for a long time. Liquid Zoo. What's happening? Thank you for stopping in. And Liquid Zoo is someone that I'm supposed to contact too. And, of course, my laziness uh, has kept me from doing it. Now, yesterday it was uh, uh, I was supposed to contact me yesterday. Uh, yesterday it was uh, – what did we do yesterday? Uh, it was a TV 
it was a TV marathon thing that we did upstairs. Uh, you know, I don't know. We're just a really family oriented, uh, um, tight knit. That's why, you know, I've been asked, you know, to be on someone's show, you know, or something like that on YouTube, you know, on their live stream. If you want me on your channel to talk about whatever fish, shrimp, uh, price of tea in China, uh, just message me. Say, hey, you want to come on right now? Sure. If I don't have nothing to do, I'm on. Uh, but if you ask me, you know, hey, you want to do something tomorrow or the next day, my uh, my day changes by the second. It literally does. Uh, that's like here, I got a couple things to take care of, box them up. Then I got to go upstairs uh, and I just want to do a bunch of stuff for the wife in the kitchen. And then like I have these panels for the basement here. I need to get down here, uh, but it's really cold out. You know, there's just so much stuff that, you know, so I bounce around like a rubber ball. I go here, I go there, I go here, I go there. Then I sit down. I'm supposed to go to the local, my buddy's store. I never even went the other day. You know, he's waiting for me to come. Uh, you know, he expects me to show up and I didn't even show up. So it's, uh, you know, people know me for that. It's, uh, I'm just, uh, uh, you know, really busy. I, I fill my day with so much stuff. Um you know, when it comes to going, well, hey, I got to do this. I put it on the back burner. I'm like, well, really, that's not that important right now. Um, you know, I need to get this done. Or my wife's been on me about this. Or my son's been on me about this. That's like last night. Luke started crying. I was like, I'm just out of nowhere. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, oh, I, I didn't do my homework. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I didn't do my homework. I'm like, what? chill so he loves this computer so i went and got it we were trying to punch it up and uh we needed some information new login information and mama of course knew it then he realized that he can go on his ipad and do it so he went on his ipad set it up helped him out a little bit for and he was done in probably 10 minutes he's like it'll take me three hours he was done in 10 minutes so he was super excited about that um you know, and then uh, the new medications I'm, I'm on kind of made me real drowsy last night. So I came down and was watching the tank, trying to fall asleep, and then turned my phone out. Who was streaming last night? Uh, Kevin's Canines was on. And then uh, I was like, all right, I got to go back. I got to go to bed. So I shut it off later about 20 minutes. I'm like, all right, who's streaming? Went on there and Skipper's on. And I'm like, uh, he's like, come up. I'm like, if I come up, I'll never get to bed. So it's, uh, you know, it's, I got to change my stuff, but I don't mean to, uh, I don't mean to blow anybody off. I, I'm not trying to be rude or disrespectful. I just, uh, I got to get my head in the game, man. I really, really do. I really do. Oh, it's Big J, Big J, Fish Keeper. What's up? Big J's got some some banging. I, I watched his stuff last night too. Uh, Jay, you gotta do. Well, you don't have to, but do longer videos. You do that video on your tank, change the top, make the lights better. Show show the discus. I just want to see the discus more. You know. <laughs> so Jay Jay came up with the. Uh, came up with something last night I didn't even know. There's a lot of stuff I don't know. Sometimes it's my own name. Uh, half beaks are going in that tank. See, I knew I'd remember. Uh, but uh, he said his discus was peppering, getting you know, because discus get like start to get black spots on their face because that's uh, uh, that's something that they start to breed out of them because peppering. I don't mind peppering. I don't. I, I don't think it looks that bad. <clears throat> but uh, uh, I never knew that it was the reason that he said it was. Um, so I was watching his video, and he's like, "Yeah, I put a a backdrop. He put a blue backdrop on the back of his tank. You know the the stuff that you tape on back there." He's like, "Cause my my discus or one of his discus are peppering." I'm like. <laughs> 
what's that got to do with anything? I always thought that was a natural thing that some of them, they still carried the gene. But I guess it's uh, due to the fact that um, they're trying to, like, hide and camouflage themselves because uh, the tank is, you know, it's open all the way around, you know. Uh, so he covers the back, you know, because discus get really, um, uh, you know, they, they, they can get freaked out easily. Uh, when I was breeding discus, uh, there was a little trick that I used to do. Um, I don't know if anyone else does it. You know, any of the big, big name people. Uh, I know one guy does, but um, I used to leave a light on. Uh, because, you know, you get up, walk around or something, just that. Them seeing that, they can eat all their babies. A discus will can eat all their babies if you freak them out too much. If they're not used to someone walking around. And if you have tanks that are painted front and sides or back and sides, they don't see nothing but right in front. So I don't really like painting tanks. Uh, I used to do it. And I was like, you know, I think maybe that could be the back is cool. Cover the back. Um, but And maybe in between tanks. But if they can see more, they won't freak out as much. If they can see you coming. So what they used to, what I was taught years ago was uh, give them a nightlight. So I used to get like uh, solar lights. I'd run the solar panel into the window over there and have the light. And then at night it would turn on and it'd be up on the ceiling and it would aim at the tank. And they said that the fish would think that it was like uh, uh, the moon, you know, and they had light and they could see and they wouldn't freak out if you got up to walk past the tank or something, uh, you know, doing stuff like that. So, you know, he said he put the back on the tank so the, the fish wouldn't try to camouflage and hide um, so much. And I never knew that. <clears throat> you know, as much as I knew about discus and I know about discus, never knew that. I just thought peppering was... Uh, you know, you would get it in some, even though they've they fought so hard to breed it out. I mean, doesn't mean you can get, you know, that they don't carry the gene or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, that was a pretty, uh, that was a good learning experience last night, Big J. Fish Tropic, what is going on in the tropics? Glad you're here. Good to see you. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so today we're going to do, uh, oh, what's Liquid Zoo say? Want to go live and talk about big government holding us back. We're at stop signs. Holding us back. What does that mean? Stop by? Oh. Okay, you're going to go live? All right, yeah. I don't ever mind uh, ever have an issue listening to government uh, conversations. Like I said, uh, it's kind of funny sometimes how people get uh, with, with stop signs. Holding us back with stop signs. <laughs> stop! Yeah, it's... I start conversations in this house. They they don't end. They don't they don't go long. They don't go long at all. It's pretty funny. You know what they what was I always told growing up? Don't talk about religion, big thing. Uh, don't talk about uh, race, and don't talk about uh, government, race, religion, and government, uh, because it can cause huge issues if you're somewhere where you know i mean it could cause fights all sorts of stuff <laughs> but i mean if you ask yourself about it sometimes uh if people don't talk about it how will anything possibly ever get solved so talking about things every once in a while i guess isn't too bad if everyone could stay grown up and uh, not explode it was a joke not a very good one I find humor in all that stuff 
Liquid Zoo. So um, I find humor in government all the time, all the, all the, all the time. Uh, I think it's the sadness of it is what uh, I laugh at. Uh, because I, it, you know, most of the time, if I don't laugh, uh, then it'll be another thing that, that bothers me and stresses me out even more. So, uh, we try to stay, keep all that stuff, uh, you know, laughable here. Oh, so the pearl weed, I got this big thing of pearl weed in here. Um, I'm taking a pearl weed out and it's going to go in that tank there. Whoop, this one here for the half beaks. Now I'm going to, uh, sucks in all that sand out of there because that's black sand with, uh, I, I capped it over here for the blue dreams, but it's black sand over uh, pool sand, pool filter sand. Uh, and I have, you know, was that OCD or whatever? And, you know, like all, all the fish tanks look the same. So, um, so those fish will look really, the hat beaks will look really, really good. Platinum, they're all platinum, 24 of them. So they look really good uh, on all black. So, and I'm gonna put the pearl weed stretch out up there so they can hide and stuff in it. Uh, quite excited. So uh, hopefully those get here soon. Uh, they're being uh, kind of partially quarantined right now, being fed, fattened up a little bit for the trip. Um, so hopefully all make it. Uh, they should all make it. So. Uh, gas here is, uh, I think like right around here, my house, 309, then it goes 309, 319, 335. And then as you get like over to, uh, the cities, like where University of Michigan is and stuff, you're getting like close to 350, you know, it's like rich area, richer areas. And by the expressways is where, is where it's higher, um, they always have it because once you come off the e-way, if you got to come off to get gas, they're not going to give you a good price. They, you know, they want to take advantage of that. So, yeah, three hundred nine to three fifty. Hey, Ann Arbor's like uh, almost three fifty. I'm out. Got to do my job. Apparently, I may be back. It never lasts on. New local Austin. Thank you for stopping in. If you have not hit that thumbs up, please hit it on the way out. S says three to three twenty nine a gallon. I put my blues on white sand. Yeah, I had my blues on white sand, and uh, I don't know, drowning them out a lot. So that's why I just I went back to black on everything. The only thing, uh, the only thing that doesn't uh, show well on black is uh, the greens. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, Greens on uh, green jade on dark substrate will actually show you that what you think are crappy shrimp on white light substrate are not crappy. Um, it's just shrimp lighting up on light substrate, and they could look more of a clear uh, uh, shrimp when they're actually not. They're actually a great color. So you got to uh, you got to watch that. Like I just watched. Um, uh, Bob Moss and he was uh calling some of his green shrimp and uh I did I wasn't I missed it but I wasn't able to get on there and tell he's calling it from light substrate to go to black substrate um which they will darken up but uh yeah green uh shrimp are incredible if you have light substrate but a bunch of like plants and stuff they'll darken up but for me you know, having these tanks so full, uh, having light substrate, I have moss, but really nothing that they can have a backdrop to darken up, you know, so I always go with the darker substrate. <laughs> Rico Stan, what is going on? Rico Stan, the guy who got Corey from Aquarium Co-op on his channel, that's magical. I don't even know if I know what to ask a guy like that. Because it's like, I mean, man, that's, I mean, what do you ask a guy that's been around the world to do so much, you know? You really got to get in there and you got to hit him with something that he's not used to being asked, like, you know, something. 
I mean, you really got to do your homework on that. So kudos to you for having Corey on your channel. I uh, used to go to Ann Arbor quite often as a kid. Isn't Shipshawana up that way too? I can't remember where it is now. Uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you, buddy. Uh, I've never heard of Shipshawana. Let me see. Uh, I'll punch it up really quick. Um, I'm in Ann Arbor a lot, but it's always just uh, it's always just to work. Um, there is no reason not to go. It's just it's a college town, so it is slammed. Um, Ship Shalana, uh That's in in S H uh, E S H A. S H A. But, uh, oh, it's in Indiana, this says, so it must be gone. Ship Swana is in Indiana. Unless it's a store or something, that might not be, I don't know. But uh, going to Ann Arbor is like, uh, I don't even know what it's like. I wouldn't even uh, know what to compare it to. I would think maybe going to like somewhere in California or something. Um, you know, uh, because it's... Uh, College kids everywhere. Um, the restaurants are slammed uh, with all walks of life, uh, you know, meaning uh, people come in from, you know, out of town, uh, far away. You know, they might drive in to shop, you know, because they have, you know, special different types of stores in Ann Arbor. Um, uh, foods, you know, they have like... Uh, um, 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 uh, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. They have like, uh, more, you, you know, they have like, uh, uh, Jewish food, uh, Arabic food, uh, Greek food, you name it. It's like, you go up and down the, the roads there. It's like, they have incredible, all these incredible restaurants. I mean, you want to try it. You want to do this. You want to do that. It's there. They have like, you know, like bookstores, you know, upscale bookstores. Uh, you know, it's just a really cool place to go to. But it's slammed. Slammed. They have parking on the, on the roads, you know, on the sides. You got to put money in them and stuff. But if you don't get on the road, parking's very far if and expensive, you know. So uh, uh, that's why I don't go. It's, uh, you know, unless it's for work and then I have to walk five miles for that but yeah Ann Arbor is pretty sweet yeah Illinois is, yeah well, Rico knows how to get what he wants Indiana yeah huh for some reason I thought it was for the north I grew up around South Bend oh okay and I think anybody could interview anybody else it's really just having conversation being interested what they said yeah 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 but but do you agree with you know having a conversation with somebody asking you know the same question over and over you know being asked that question over and over it's uh i mean what did you ask him <laughs> something about what he eats or what his favorite food is or something you know it, it, that's a question that you know someone interviewing somebody about you know, we're just having a conversation with somebody about fish and, uh, you know, the hobby and this and that. You, you really wouldn't, you know, think of getting that uh, that type of question. So when you asked me that, I was like, ooh, good one. Because it made him think, oh, well, uh, you know, what was he talking about, about getting Chinese? Was it? No, it wasn't Chinese. It was uh, something else that he said that, uh, wait, was it Chinese? Might have been Chinese. Oh no, sushi, sushi. He said that. Uh, Corey said that he's not big into sushi, but he'll go eat it if everyone's going to eat it. So you know, it's just uh, different questions that make 
um, you know, that, that shuffle it up a bit, you know, instead of hearing the same stuff over and over when you, when you ask those, uh, far out questions like that, it's like, Ooh, you know, I didn't know about this or, you know, what, what kind of, uh, tennis shoes he wears, you know, uh, what's his favorite fast food restaurant, you know, just goofy stuff, but you know, what's a guy that's on the run that travels to all these countries to look for fish and stuff? Uh, what's his go-to uh, when he's on the road? You know, uh, fast food, uh, restaurants, you know, stuff like that. What is a guy that's so busy uh, finally sit down to eat at the end of the day? You know, stuff like that. That's cool. I find that to be pretty cool. It's pretty funny at times, uh, you know, because you'll get a lot of, if I'm really going, I got to, you know, if I'm in a pinch, you know, and I don't have time. I'll eat pop tarts and you know a dry ramen or something. You know it's just goofy stuff. You know, and you're like, ah, I never thought of that. I just keep it a personal slide and stay away from the hobby, more as a person and not a business owner. Oh, nice. Yeah, I agree. I know all these people love talking about fish, but they have to be tired of answering. What's it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. It's kind of like the question: what's what's the easiest shrimp to keep? Uh, a neo caradinia, I would have to say. I mean, you know, cherry shrimp is, you know, that's got to stop being the the go to answer all the time because you figure all, all neos, almost all neos, all came from clear shrimp, and then colored shrimp came from clear shrimp, and then they just called them and got the colors like that. So I mean, it's, you know. Uh, I keep them all fine. If you got a male and a female, uh, you know, and a seasoned tank, a well-seasoned tank, you're good to go. I mean, if you don't have a well-seasoned tank and you put shrimp in there, uh, you shouldn't have any problem of them dying or anything like that. You just what they just uh, probably won't reproduce as fast. I know caradinas. That's one of their huge things. Um, caradinas. Uh, do not like to reproduce quickly in a tank that's um, uh, not cycled, you know. And the older a tank is, the better a shrimp, the shrimp like an old tank. Uh, they just do. Um, but they don't mind you cleaning it out either because I'll take, the, <laughs> I'll take these tanks, take all the shrimp out of them, <clears throat> take everything out of it, take it over to the sink, run you know, lukewarm water in there, rinse the whole tank off, stir the substrate out, pour the yucky stench out of there, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out until it's clear, bring it back, smooth it out, fill it back up, and I'll keep like 50% of the old water. I put that in, I fill it back up, and then next thing you know, they're having babies. So they like that too. They like uh, they like a big cleaning. Just don't do it while they're in there because uh, you could lose some. Uh, if you're going to do a big tank cleaning, <clears throat> do as before, like you're start, like you're putting them in the water for the first time, you know, drip them, drip them in and then just put them in the tank. They'll be good to go. Cause you know, if the, if the, uh, if the TDS is the same, your room temperature is the same, you know, everything's the same. Uh, just test your waters before get it the same. When you put it back together, it's going to have 50% of the old water. 50% new water, and you're just going to rinse out the sponge filter, uh, it's good to go. You know, so uh, shrimp really respond well to that. Um, they really do. They like it uh, because at times, you know, and another thing you could be like, man, my shrimp ain't breeding. What's going on? Uh, you know, um, if if you go to – if you go to stir – hold on a sec.
Sorry about that. It was the wife. <laughs> she said, what are you doing? I said, you know, I can't never not answer it. You know, when she calls it, you know, it could be an accident or something. I was like, I'm on live. She's like, oh, <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> She's silly. Uh, but, um, and I purposely don't prep. I want it to feel as real as possible, not scripted anyway. Exactly, dude. A every person, what, two people that I've had on here, unless I'm just having a conversation. People who come up all the time, we can sit and just, you know, kick it. It doesn't matter. Uh, but if I have someone on, I don't write anything out. Because it's kind of like uh, I tell them, um, if I'm watching a stream and let's say Rico's having a conversation with uh, Corey, there's questions in my head that, that could pop up. And I would like, if I was there, this is what I would ask. So as I do a stream, I just do the same thing. And as I get, uh, you know, I, as I get them talking, I think of what I would want to ask next. So, you know, I mean, I could go from one uh, area all the way to another and be, you know, be, have a big jump, you know, and it's just like, you know, it's a question that comes quick that I'd want answered, uh, you know, and of course I want to answer it or ask it so I don't forget it. So I do that a lot too. But yes, I agree. The ringtone though, what was that? Yeah. I like that ringtone? Yeah. I just get tired, you know, I'm an old school, you know, I like the old school sounds, all these new sounds on the phone. They're just like, uh, and then the thing is, is, you know, you're like, oh, that's cool. You think you're the only one. And then you go to the store and you hear somebody behind you, there's stuff stringing the same. Then you go reach for your pocket and you're like, it's not mine. It's somebody else's. And then that person whose phone's ringing, they're laughing because when it rings, there's so many people reaching for their phone. I'm like, <clears throat> you know, this is, you know, some jokey TV show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you know, and they're all laughing at you because, you know, it's kind of like them knowing your phone and they're calling you, <clears throat> you know, to see if I went down the wrong way. So that gets me too. I don't like uh, all those funky sounds and stuff. Danny Wesley says, I'm back, Brian. Can we see your black rose? <clears throat> uh, no. Uh, only because um, I can't double camera this. And I'm using my Logitech. And the black rose are way down there. <laughs> and I can't stretch it right there. I can do it uh, later. Um, I can double I can double camera stream uh, stream labs. I can actually quadruple stream labs. I just can't do it on stream yard. All everything starts hooting and hollering and going crazy. And I did it for like 250 red rillies yesterday out of a 10 gallon. You wouldn't believe the amount of shrimp in this tank. Yeah, I I, I used to do uh, my tangerine tigers. They're they're really a hearty shrimp. <coughs> I would do like two three hundred. You know, I get an order for two, three hundred of them for uh, California. I'd mail it off and <clears throat> it would still, it'd be there every time. Oh, send us, you know, 200. Send us 180. Tank never ran out. <coughs> Excuse me. Dang. Now, all of a sudden, I did something. Something happened to the tank. Don't know what. Wiped them all out. <coughs> every one of them, but maybe six. And it wiped them out really weird because I never saw dead bodies. Uh, nothing. It's just, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. I, that That's why it's very important to eyeball your tanks all the time. Be in them. Not literally in them, but, you know, move stuff around with something, you know. Check and make sure that they're okay and there's not dead snails because that was the problem. Uh, snails were dying, and uh, those crappy ram's horn snails I don't care what anybody says, those are a shrimp tank killer. Uh, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, it's like throwing a, a hand grenade because 
if it's big enough, oh my gosh, if snails start dying in, in the tank, it'll wipe out the whole tank. I've lost way too many, uh, way too many uh, shrimps to uh, snails. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so that's why uh, what I try to do is just keep the um, uh, the MTS snails, Malaysian trumpet snails, um, and uh, when I feed, uh, I try to scoop out every single ram's horn snail I see. Uh, to try to cut it down and get it out of there so I don't have any issues with it. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's just horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. The amount of uh, shrimps you can lose to uh, ram's horns. Can't stand them. Uh, Fish Adventures, welcome, welcome, welcome. This guy gets an F in class. <laughs> Uh, Anthony C. Sorry about that. Uh, trying to understand why restarting a tank would trigger breeding. Uh, I have seen this with my tanks. <clears throat> uh, it's clean, uh, cleaner. Um, think about it. You know, shrimp come from streams. Water's running through there all the time. Uh, a, a tank, um, a shrimp tank like I keep uh, has a dual sponge filter on it. It doesn't have, a, you know, a hang on back canister, anything like that. <clears throat> so I don't have a sump, you know, the the water's not removed. Yeah, good. Take this. That tastes like dog pee. Whatever dog pee would taste like, that's, oh, that's horrible. Thank you. Um, so, uh um, it, everything that goes bad or everything, you know, in the tank, it just stays there. It, you know, and they're not getting, you know, think about it in a stream, the water's moving all day long to get fresh water, fresh water, fresh water. Everything's new. I mean, what's on the bottom in the sand and the substrate, uh, you know, all the gook, muck, leaves, branches, everything, it's all good. Because that water is pristine all day, every day. Uh, you know, it's fresh, clean. Well, in a shrimp tank, you know, uh, it water gets stale. Water gets stale. So, you know, yeah, you change water, you know, once a week, 10% or whatever. Well, that's 10%. Still, you got 90% of stale water in there. It doesn't have that freshness and the oxygenation. Even though my filters are banging out oxygen, it's not bringing, you know, uh, uh, minerals and, you know, everything that the water flowing all day long brings. So when you take a tank, you're not restarting because I don't scrub the glass. I don't get rid of algae. I don't get rid of anything, but I do try to get rid of uh, duckweed. So I'll scrape it, I'll scoop it out, and then anything that's up around the rim, I clean that off really good. But all I do is I rinse that substrate, rinse it out, rinse it out, rinse it out, get all that muck and gunk out of it. Because think about it, <clears throat> substrate in a tank is only so deep. I mean, like my tank's quarter inch, you know, some maybe a little deeper. Um but think about it in a stream. I mean, how deep does dirt and sand go? So all that stuff just runs away, runs away, and I mean, it goes forever. <clears throat> so in here, you have all that muck at the bottom, and it's kind of like, uh, you know, rotting matter. And they're just on top of this rotting matter 24-7, and it's not going away. You know, it's not going away 20 feet down uh away from them you know so uh when i clean it out i think to myself that all that rotting matter that should be going further away uh it's not and they don't like to be in there it's kind of like uh i don't know a cat goes to the bathroom in a litter box they don't you know they don't like sleep by it or something you know they don't want to be around it well it's kind of like sh uh shrimp you know they don't they don't want to 
be around all that stuff, I would think. So when I clean it, all of a sudden the, the tank just explodes and the females get buried and <clears throat> the shrimp just seem like they're super happy. Now, I don't change the substrate. I don't get rid of it. Nothing. I have a five-gallon bucket outside full of substrate that I won't throw away that I've been taking out of the tanks that I've been consolidating. Um, Because there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I don't know how long this stuff lasts for, but it lasts a long time. It keeps my pH down. Uh, everything. Um, so I don't I don't throw anything away when it comes when it's expensive like that. But uh, so uh, I I don't know. But those are the reasons that I tell myself why to do it because they'll be happier. Um, and they'll respond better. And they do. They respond better, breed way more. That's why I do these big cleanings where I take everything out, scrape the glass, uh, you know, siphon out algae, all that stuff. I'll vacuum the substrate, do everything. Try not to stir it up to where it's nasty. But uh, even with sabwasertan, I've noticed if you take sabwasertan and move it around, all that detritus and stuff is all in that plant. So, I mean, in that moss. So, <clears throat> to take it out, to take the sabwasitan out, take it out in pieces, make sure there's no shrimp in it, or if you're... Oh, hold on. This is... Uh, oh. Good afternoon. All right. Sorry about that. It was uh, the nurse for my mother. But uh, so um, taking sabwashtan out, if you don't know if your moss or your sabwashtan has shrimp in it, you pull it out, put it in a bucket, just make sure there's a little bit of water in there. I mean, you know, they'll be in the bucket. They're not going to freeze or anything. And then when you're done, what I do is that water in there is I just – Rinse are kind of like a sponge, but you don't squeeze it. But move it around, get all that detritus out of it and stuff, lift it up, put it right back in there. And it's just the uh, shrimp go nuts over it. Uh, <laughs> Semi-year-old substrate. Yeah, I keep substrate, dude. It's uh, it's uh, I try not to... Uh, I don't throw it away. I like I said, I got a five gallon bucket. Of, I have a five gallon bucket over there full of some washing tan, and I have a clear bucket. I just moved it. It was up there. Uh, it's out there now. Um, a two and a half gallon bucket full of some washing tan, literally at the top. So the guys that I'm filling up today, uh, if anyone needs some washing tan, let me know. I'll, it's cheap. I'll sell it. I'll give you a lot. I mean, so like for. Five bucks, I'll give you a softball, big, you know, and I'll squeeze it down. I have a lot to get rid of. So, so Boston Tan is uh, sweet. I started, a uh, guy sent me like a football size. Yeah, about that size. Paid like, I don't know, 20 bucks. Hey, the Ma's uh, nurse just called, you know, the upper body chick. She said she'll be here in about 20 minutes. Is that all right? Yeah. You all right? All right. Oh, all right. Oh. Okay. All right, sweet. But, uh, People sell golf ball size for $15 here. Yeah, it's a – oh, even color gravel. Uh, I'll take some Sabwasa tan. Yeah, it's a – like I said, you want to pay the shipping and give me five bucks, I'll hook you up, Danny. Danny, where is she? And you're not far from me, so it wouldn't take too long to get to you. Um, but, uh, yeah, Sabwasa tan is expensive. I take it to the store. See, my nipples are getting cold. I take it to the store. Oh, here's the bucket right here. I'm sitting here staring at it, talking to you guys. This is just one of them. That's all some washer tape. 
uh, I take it to the store and something like this, I would have, now look, there's uh, there might be some algae in it, but like I said, the trick that I've come, but see, it looks good. There's no stinks. There must be some, uh, I'm going to have to rinse it out. There's got to be uh, dead uh, snails in it. See, that's what I'm saying. You get snails in the stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'll rinse it out here. Yep, here's a snail right here. Um, but uh, um, 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 what I did by accident is I put it in a bucket. That's a heavy bucket. I put it in a bucket, and uh, there was no water in it. I forgot about it. The next day I came in, and it was just this massive ball of wash tank with no water. It was all real fluffy and soft like cotton. And I tore some off during the tank, and it floated for like two days. And it had air bubbles all over it and then sank. And, I mean, it's just beautiful. I'm like, oh, wow. And there's no air algae on it. So, God, that really stinks now. Jeez Louise. Most people kill it. Yeah, it's for me. It's uh, I gotta rinse this off. Hold on, God, does it stink? Woo. And a dead stink. Sorry about that. Holy hell. Smell like a dead body. But the Sawasatan is as thick and green as can be. They like sitting in them buckets. Uh, you know, in the dark, it's good. Because that kills a lot of stuff, you know, when it, I mean, algaes and stuff. So I just rinsed it out a whole bunch, and now it's really good. So damn, stirring the snail's nest. That's what I did. Oh, Whew. that five gallon there, that's slammed to the top. Uh, I'm going to need to do that one too. But uh, it's just, um, you know, I have so much. I would rather, you know, sell it real cheap and let everybody benefit from it than, uh, you know, um, throw it away because I'm not getting the price that I want. 
And now that I'm at the 700 mark, I might even do a, a, a giveaway, you know, or some giveaways. You know, if people want to pay the uh, shipping, you know, stuff like that. Since I'm at 700, if it stays at 700. Hell yes, use substrate as a layer and dirty tank. See, that's what uh, that's what I. <clears throat> I'm wondering if I was to, what the difference would be if I made a dirty tank for shrimp, but I made the substrate real deep, let's say like five inches. Um, you know what the response would be there because all the all the bad stuff would be able to go five inches away from the shrimp. Uh, and would have more area to rot, um, you know, and uh, there would be more more bacteria in the tank to take care of uh, ammonia and stuff like that if a snail died instead of uh, wiping out a whole uh, colony of shrimp. So that's something to think about, too. But, all right, I think I'm going to hop off of here. Uh uh, my mother's, uh, um, my mother's, uh, uh, nurse is coming over and, uh, I need to, I usually help with that, get the dogs outside and all that stuff. So, uh, hour and 30 minutes, it's pretty darn good, but yeah, uh, keep an eye out. I don't know who's uh, streaming tonight. If it's slow tonight, I'll, uh, come on and, uh, if I'm still at 700, I'll do a, uh, I'll give a, do a giveaway. Uh, for the 700 and uh, sure it'd be a bunch of cool stuff. Um, but yeah, I got a few things to do here. Got to run to the post office uh, and um, the wife's home now. So we got to uh, get a bunch of stuff done. It's, uh, you know, uh, uh, times, you know, the weather's changed. So I got to get out, spray the windows. You know, they all take out all the screens that got to be washed down, get all the dust off of them. I do a spring and a, and a fall, uh, you know, so you don't have dirty windows through the winter and stuff. I don't, you know, squeegee them or I just wash all that dust and dirt off, you know. Uh, uh, you know, so there's a lot of stuff. I got to cover up the air conditioner. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things I have to do around here, and I hate to be, uh, you know, I don't want to not show the attention that I need to, but I got to get some stuff uh, caught up around here. So, um, all right, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna end the stream. We'll be back later if no one's streaming. I'll come back on <clears throat> uh, and uh, do a giveaway for the 700 subs. Uh, all I can say is thanks so much, everybody. I mean. 700 to me is like uh it's like climbing mount everest it's huge uh like i said some stuff's turning on on youtube and i'm like oh wow uh, i'm things are starting you know i'm starting to get uh come back uh um, i'm starting to get uh you know doors are starting to open and that's what i like because like i said i want to be able to use my phone i want to be able to go like uh you know, do things and be able to stream right from my phone instead of it saying, you cannot do this. You have to go through a server and then I got to go through something else. And then it struggles to stream, you know, to YouTube through StreamYard or Streamlabs. So orders come back, orders. Yes, yes, yes. But okay, everyone, I just want to say thank you to all my moderators. Thank you to all my subscribers. You guys are incredible. Uh, it's just... Uh, you know, without everybody, I wouldn't be where I am. Uh, I would just be doing this all by myself. And uh, even though it's a hobby and that's cool, it's fun to share with people. I really enjoy it and uh, meeting everybody. It's really fun to meet everybody that I've met and uh, that I still meet. Um, you know, it's like, uh, you know, my friends list has gotten big, even though we may not be able to sit around a campfire or, or celebrate Christmas together, you know, in the same house, you know, we're still, you know, uh, you have way more friends than what you think you do. So thank you so much, everyone, for everything you do. I could say that a bazillion times and it still wouldn't be enough. So until next time, take care of yourself from Motor City Aquatics, soon to be uh, take care. Stay shrimpy. 
and we'll see you soon. Remember, when you do water changes, spit, don't swallow, because that stuff tastes like shite. All right, everybody. Peace. See ya.